So the absorb scaffold is a stent-like device, but instead of being made out of a metal, which basically is permanent, never goes away in the life of the patient, the scaffold is made out of a polymer, specifically poly-L lactic acid. And this polymer is a bioresorbable material, which basically in approximately three years completely resorbs and is converted to carbon dioxide and water. The polymer backbone of the absorbed scaffold is coated with um, Everolimus, so a very potent anti-proliferative agent. So the concept of Absorb is that it provides the drug-eluting stent functions and the mechanical support functions of a typical metallic drug-eluting stent for the first year or so, and then starts resorbing over time. And when it's gone after three years, it'll provide unique long-term benefits for the patient because the patient doesn't need a long-term metal scaffold or stent in their artery for their life, which can only cause future problems. So preliminary studies with the first Absorb BVS device, which is a first generation device, have actually shown increased early and intermediate term adverse events, particularly target lesion failure and device thrombosis. And again, of the target lesion failure, it's been mostly target vessel related myocardial infarction, most of which has been due to device thrombosis. This has occurred early within 30 days, from 30 days to one year, and from one year out to three years. And that's the longest term follow up we have so far. And we believe that these adverse events are due to a combination of one suboptimal technique. We did not, we did not, any, no one did, uh, employ a BVS specific technique to optimize the device. And two, this is a first generation device which is substantially thicker than the current contemporary metallic drug eluting stents we use and has limited expansion capabilities. So the combination of a suboptimal device and suboptimal technique has led to somewhat higher event rates. Not terrible, but just somewhat higher than the excellent event rates that we get with contemporary metallic drug eluting stents like Zions. So Absorb 3 was the pivotal U.S. approval trial, which did lead to approval and market clearance of the Absorb BVS scaffold. And in Absorb 3, which was a U.S.-based study, we randomized 2,008 patients to Absorb versus Zions. And while at one year, Absorb was non-inferior to the Zions metallic drug looting stent, the adverse events continued to accrue in both arms over time, but slightly more with Absorb compared to Zions. So we did see an increase in scaffold thrombosis compared to stent thrombosis and a strong trend towards somewhat more, more target lesion failure, now with follow-up all the way out to three years. Absorb 4 was the follow-on study, and that was an even larger study in 2,604 patients. Again, randomized Absorb versus Zions. And what we did differently in Absorb 4 were two things. One, we learned from Absorb 3 that there were many patients with very small vessels that were enrolled, that shouldn't have been enrolled. There were technically protocol violations. And we trained the investigators much, much better not to enroll patients in those, in, in, um, with those types of lesions. And two, we also in Absorb 4 enrolled patients who were troponin positive, acute coronary syndromes, thrombotic lesions, and up to three lesions. So, here we looked at the 30-day outcomes of Absorb 4 to see if these changes made a difference in the outcomes. And once again at 30 days, non-inferiority was met with Absorb compared to Zions, but again the outcomes tended to be a little bit worse with Absorb. Not statistically significant, but the same sorts of trends that we saw in Absorb 3. The device thrombosis rates at 30 days were 0.6% with Absorb and 0.2% with Zions. Now when we looked at the about 75% of the patients who were like the Absorb 3 patients, by, we did get rid of almost all implantation in small vessels, the very, very small vessels. Those were which we could measure with basically less than 2.5 millimeters. And we lowered the scaffold thrombosis rates in Absorb, but we also lowered it with Zions. So we improved outcomes with both devices by using better technique. Uh, the thrombosis rates in both Absorb and Zions were higher in the non-ST segment elevation ACS patients, but again, somewhat higher with Absorb than Zions. 
So the bottom line is we are making progress. We still need better technique. We've taken care of the small vessel issue, but we didn't take care of adequately post-dilating uh, the vessels to optimal pressure and sizing to prevent some of the very late complications. But we also need somewhat better devices with thinner struts, with improved expansion capability, and other um, uh, compositional changes.